Hello, everybody. Calipari sent as coach in Kentucky. Got a reprieve. And we are catching our second wind just in time for the Sweet 16. Recording live from somewhere. This is one and done. Get out the insurance cards. Get out the co-pays. The office is open, my friends. Brought to you by DrRoto.com. It's time once again for everybody to come aboard that Green Screens Media Train. Welcome, bienvenidos a todos, to one and done your fast break of college basketball in formacion. We happen to be powered, if you didn't know, by the world's, may I say, universe's greatest website, that would be drrodo.com. My name is Jay Heinrich. I am him. I am the humble host. And I am also the conductor of the aforementioned Green Screens Media Train. Find me on X at Dr. William Cannon. Follow me and I will hit that follow back button. That is what I do. Without further ado, let's get to two of the absolute best to do it in the business. Some of the best minds in college basketball and beyond, starting with El Capitan himself. He is the captain of the Green Screens Media ship. He does the ship. I do the train. Eric does the boat. Not the one that hit the bridge. Eric is not is not responsible for that boat. He, do, he does all the vehicles, though. He does all the stuff. But Mike, the OG money Mike, find him on X at MC Holland 34. Mr. Mike Collin. Mike, what it do? Yo, man, I'm ready for this Sweet 16 because it is a sweet, sweet matchup uh, basically throughout every game in the Sweet 16. So looking forward to that, man. Uh, looking forward to these large contests. Again, we're not getting Survivor, uh, which I, I think that's a good thing because that thing wore me out. <laughs> it's like I don't want to lose these lineups on, on the third day. Uh, so that was, that was pretty stressful. It was a lot of fun. Uh, but looking forward to trying to figure out how to uh, navigate a, uh, a, a weird slate, a very weird slate with a bunch of really good teams and guys that we have been talking about all season long. So I'm ready to get to it, yeah. my man. We hit on this on the recap show yesterday. How I was saying, like, th these are the matchups that you want in the Sweet 16. You don't want to see the 14 seeds in the Sweet 16. Nobody wants that. At least I don't. And neither does, at least I think he doesn't, the guy who is last in the intros, ladies and gents, broskies and broskets, but he's also first in your hearts. The Baron of Bread of Green Screens Media, you can find in those Twitter streets at Fantasy Nappies. Eric the Blue. Mr. Eric Romov. Eric, what's happening? Man, I am stoked about these Sweet 16 matchups. I am stoked that we have some meaningful prize pools on the board yes. for DraftKings. I'm also I'm pretty pumped that we're able to have this show like, I don't know, 36 hours before the, the slate tips off, right? Usually we're weaving these in about 10 or 12 hours before lock, sometimes 24. So got some time to you know really go all the way in on our analysis and, and look through these rosters top to bottom. And as always, we got some of our favorites rocking with us in the comments already. Forklift Jeremy, Front Row Joe, first one here with the good evening, fellas. The salute and heating us up. Ain't the kid having fun with some of these NIT games today. Chris Napier, our man, M Napesy Hustle, heating us up as he always does. And we've got, we've got Mama Rocks, fresh Mama back Rocks. from the homestead here live. I know you've been catching us in the mornings. Happy to have you here tonight while we are live how about your dogs mama rocks dominating the old nit i'm not gonna lie have a day when Georgia. i saw when i saw antikid's comment come up at first i read it as these knit games were lit that's just how i read it <laughs> and then it took me a second it's like the knit games were oh yes of course the nit the whole we're other tournament out there there is that other one that somebody tried to convince me in 2019 was going to matter for the University of Texas, but it didn't. Anyways, we are talking Sweet 16 and the old big dance, as they say, trademark, trademark, not us. Somebody else, owns, March Madness, maybe somebody owns that too, not us. That. But not me. The Sweet 16, though, that's probably also a trademark. 
Anyways, the Sweet 16 is here, and so are we. So hit all of those buttons, like, and subscribe. Be your part in the Green Screens Media Universe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything that we are doing, especially this time of year. It's, it truly is the most wonderful time of the year. Mama Rock's saying these lineups are going to be tough, and they are. Mama Rock's, this is a four-game slate, obviously. Tipping at 7.09 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday, March 28th. Twenty dollar twenty k to first. We've seen we've seen one of those. We saw the, one of those last Thursday, as well. I believe twenty dollar entry, twenty k to first, and then we got a five dollar entry for two k to first. Not too shabby. We're looking for those commas, broskies and brosquets. Before we can get to the dollars and cents, let's get to the overview tonight. Eric and Blue, going to start with you. What do you think about this slate? Yeah, Mama Rock said it perfectly, right? This is going to be a tricky one to navigate. Uh, we will obviously give you our thoughts on how we're going to go about doing it throughout the course of this show, right? You've obviously got the big total. You know, it's always exciting when we see 170 plus total out there. You got a couple of solid totals and then the low ones. So, um, you know, navigating that on a four game slate is going to add a degree of difficulty. And the the pricing overall is is pretty tough, right? Like, no value that you feel great about. You know, you you want to get to these studs, but you're you know you're risking, uh, you know, or at least necessitating some some pretty ugly, ugly value plays or risking some duds by by clicking those names. So, you know, the the key to the slate for me is is really just finding that one cheap guy that goes off, and usually that is a volume approach, right? That is one where you're going to have to get a number of different lineups in there and rotate around the value. No doubt about it, Mike. We were talking in the studio before we went live, and we were talking about how, just like what Eric was saying, how you're gonna have to just get the get the right guys at the top of the at the top of your stack. And then, I mean, we don't like to just say spin the wheel. We're gonna the good thing about tonight, Mike, uh, about this show and leading into Thursday slate is we're covering everything. Obviously, there's four games only, so we're covering a lot more players per game. Gonna try to find ways to get uh, some of this value into this non-existent value into the lineups, Mike, but how are you approaching this slate uh, in particular? Like, it's, again, this, you know, we're going to have to spin the wheel, right? At some point, like, you just go for it. Yeah. I mean, when you have these type of teams, uh, you're going to have a, a ton of studs. Uh, we don't get this many studs on, eight to 10 game slates during the year. I mean, no, you've got Arizona, San Diego state, UConn. I mean, basically their entire starting five are studs, North Carolina and their big three. Uh, Alabama's got the two stud guards, Illinois. You've got the big three. Iowa state's got their guys um, at, a, at a pretty solid price for them. So yeah, like it's, um, it's, a, it's rough out in these streets. I think one way that you kind of attack it um, is heavy game sacks, find the game that goes over. Um, you know, that the running a 3-2, a 3-1, uh, really, really getting into maybe the game that you find that goes to overtime and really goes over. Uh, but I'm, I'm with Eric. Like, you, you got to <laughs> gotta be careful up at the top because you're going to find yourself with not a lot of money. And, it's again, once you get past 50, really once you get past 5,500, it starts getting it starts getting really dicey. Um, we don't have a Javier Esquerra. Uh, <laughs> You know, we don't have uh, Jakob uh, Neches uh, on the slate from Duquesne. We don't have, we don't have like these, like these guys that like we take shots on their thirty one hundred because we know they're going to maybe play twenty minutes. It gets pretty tough. Like the guys that are going to play twenty minutes, they're all forty five hundred to like fifty two hundred because these are obviously some of the best teams in the country, um, and you've obviously played well to get to this point. So therefore, your prices are higher. So. We don't really have any injury news. Looks like Reitzel is going to be in for Alabama. Uh, that was kind of the one thing that we were paying attention to. So it's not like we're going to be during the season where it's like, oh, no, we don't have any value. And then, you know, someone's out and all of a sudden Nuoco is 3,000 and you just play him in every lineup. So there isn't that. I feel like you just have to yellow on some of these lineups, like just throw yellow a guy the in there and just and just hope you pick the right uh, you know value piece. And then – I always see like game theory, like someone gets in the, what happens when someone gets in the foul trouble? Like how do you find the value piece is like, 
maybe you get somebody in foul trouble. What happens if, uh, you know, this circumstance happens or what happens in a potential blowout or just like just different ways that games can go that you can like try to find the edge essentially. So um, digging, we're searching. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be a interesting lineup that wins 20,000, but we're going to, we're going to break it all down and see if we can't find it for you. Why not us? Why not us? Our friend David Galloway in the live chat is sad. College basketball is coming to an end, but is predicting an avalanche of wins to finish the season. Shout out Yo. to David for sure. Everybody, let's all win something. All of us. Everybody get those doves out there. Get that bread. Mama Rock's agreeing with Mike, with Mike in terms of stacking up the game that you think goes crazy. Why not pick pick a horse and ride it? And then also, this is a sore subject for me of what happened to Grant Nelson. I kind of went a little overboard the other day. Evergreen but, topic. Yeah, but it's just, it, it is what over. it is. We almost don't have to go through that anymore. Um, yeah. No, thank you. I'm not going to budge on that one. All right, here we go. Hit those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Thanks for hopping in the live chat if you have done so and if you haven't first time long time whatever you gotta do hop in there drop a fire emojis heat us up in the live chat do your thing do your part in the green streams media universe tell all the breadheads and broskies and broskets in your life about us as well let's get to it fellas let's get to the showcase we're gonna break down all four games let's start with clemson versus my pick to win the whole thing arizona a 153 point implied total according to kempom as all of our numbers and metrics are. Uh, Arizona obviously likes to get up and go ski. So big time pay up spot for Clemson. A uh, couple of really good teams, obviously. And these, these are the sort of matchups just up and down the board that there's not one game that I don't want to sit down and watch. And I don't know, can, can we get to Arizona and UNC? We all want to walk down Narrative Street. Well, we got to get through this one first, but let's get in the, and let's start with the Clemson side, Mike. Basically, eight guys. You were saying earlier too, like how we know what guys are playing. We everybody knows the rotations on these teams at this point in the tournament, so we know Clemson's playing eight guys. So how do we attack the Tigers? <laughs> well, we talk about Grant Nelson. Let's talk about uh, I would say <laughs> the uh, the high tier Grant Nelson. Um, <laughs> Well, dang, he's down to 7,300 down. That's a little P.J. Hall here for us. Jeez. Man, he has not been good. Um, we fouled out in the last game. I mean, he's in foul trouble all last game. It was just so frustrating to watch. They still pulled that game out against Baylor. Um, but the rates are crazy. The rates are absolutely crazy for him. So as a stud um, that we paid 8,800 for, that we played 9K for this season, like, he, he's in the player pool. Um, you have to like the Clemson side for the fact that the tempo is up, right? Um, that's just – that's worth its weight in gold and that their price king is only 7,300. So, when your implied total, you know, is, is pretty solid here and you have some cheaper cheaper options than, you know, some of these other games, I'm definitely going to have interest in your, your top dog. I mean, a 30% usage rate on the year, 32% shot rate. 25% combined rebounding rate and 11% assist rate, 6% shot blocking rate. He's taken 156 threes. Like, there's 40 plus fantasy upside. We know that. I don't think he's going to be very popular either because a lot of people don't want to get to the studs that have been playing well. And uh, that's just going to leave him, I feel like, overlooked. Now, some of the sharps will probably obviously be on top of him uh, because they know the type of ceiling that he possesses. So, yeah, I like, we're getting down to the end. There's only so many more times these guys can burn us. So I'm willing to I'm willing to drop some coin on PJ Hall like going like he can only burn me a max of uh, what uh, four four more times right so um, I'm willing to go here the two Ooh. guards are are Ooh. solid solid price points too I mean you got Joe Girard here at 6500 um, we know Yolo Joe as Mama rocks uh, you know <laughs> pointedly points out in the in the comments all the time uh, 6500 like it's a fair price for him. You know, I, I really don't like him when he's close to seven. I mean, six five. Like everyone's in play, honestly. So, yeah, I mean, I would I would much rather pay for PJ Hall, the eight hundred dollars more. Uh, but Joe Girard's certainly in play, more shot dependent than, than most of these other guys are. Um, he's taking two hundred thirty nine three. So if he gets hot from three against Arizona, we saw Long Beach 
like in that first half, I mean, they were, they were racking up fantasy points, shooting threes. Um, so it's possible for, you know, someone like Gerard to have a big night. Uh, so definitely like I'll, I'll sprinkle him in some of my, uh, my tournaments. You absolutely have to, it's, it's, it's Joe Gerard, <laughs> right? You don't want to look back and be like, well, why did I not put Joe Gerard in some of my tournaments? That's like something you should never say, but then you can also say like, I wish I'd never played Joe Gerard. So, um, both can be true. yeah, both can be true here. So Chase Hunter, you get the hundred dollars savings, uh, weird to say, but like his season's been weird. Like he's been, he was terrible for, from as far as from a fantasy perspective, so like just was not hitting ceiling games for a long, long time. We kept trying to play him in like the 5k range. Now he's like the chase hunter from last year. He's playing very well. I think he's actually in cash consideration right now at 6,400. If you're playing double ups, like I feel comfortable playing chase hunter uh, in cash type settings with the way that he's got it going right now. You know, he's going to play uh, a pile of minutes. You know, he's going to shoot threes. You know, he's got the ball in his hands a ton. His assist rate starting to climb. Uh, so you like everything that Chase Hunter kind of offers you here, especially from a, a floor perspective um, versus what we we kind of kind of take away, you know, what we saw. He's playing at a different level right now. So for that reason, I'd keep him more cash and Gerard for tournaments, uh, even though he's had the kind of the tournament upside, kind of weird to say, right? But we know Joe Gerard can go for, could go for 40. So if you want to play Chase in, in, in tournaments, I don't mind that either. Either one of these guys are a good option. Jack Clark at, uh, at his price tag, a guy that we made some money on, uh, now it's starting to come back down here to 5,400. Jack Clark, man, I wouldn't sleep on him. He's one of the better value plays, especially if he's going to play 35 minutes. Like he has a good rebounding advantage, uh, not advantage, but like a rebounding rate. Um, he's not going to take a ton of shots, but he's got to be efficient when he does make his shots. He does shoot threes, shooting at 33%, which is okay. Um, I just need him to be on the floor for 35 minutes, and I'll feel very comfortable stacking either – Hall or Gerard Hunter with him. I, I do not mind that. That is actually a very cheap way to get into a pace up spot. So really looking at Jack Clark um, as not a, not really a core play, but as someone that like if I get like if I have like fifty five hundred left with two spots, he's probably someone that I'm I'm gonna want to attack. So the rest of the bench here, man, like it's uh, it's kind of ugly. I don't think I want to play Chauncey Wiggins or Dylan Hunter. Uh, those guys just don't really do it for me. So uh, Eric, man. Uh, the guy that we just never, at least I never figure out is Ian Shifflin. Like what, what are you doing with Ian Shifflin at 6,600? Yeah, nobody's really figured him out, right? Uh, he's been boom or bust all season long. And that's probably going to be the case again for, uh, for this Thursday slate, right? Like with, with PJ Hall's up and down season, He's kind of been the, the the counterbalance to that, right? He's having some of his better games when Hall sort of disappears. But, you know, in, in general, Shefflin's uh, floor feels like it's come up a bit from where we projected him heading into the season, right? You know, you, you look at his rates outside of his shot rate sitting at 16%. His, his overall profile is pretty solid. He's got a 40% rebound rate on a team with P.J. Hall, right? So, like, definitely doing a tremendous job cleaning up the, the, the glass his price at 6.6k, I mean, it just it screams large field GPP winner, right? He's he's got yes. he's got a 45 in his game log. He can absolutely you know reach back and get there again in a pace up spot if Hall decides to pull his disappearing act again, right? Like these are the kind of guys that you you love when they're getting paced up. You know, if, if you're overloading this game, he is a a huge priority. But as we talk about with a lot of these these Clemson guys, he's not without his risks. So. Um, you know, sprinkle them in, but I, I really like how this one profiles for Shefflin in particular. Uh, the other name that we haven't talked about here is RJ Godfrey. Um, you know, uh, kind of liking the the forwards in, in this one in particular. You know, Godfrey, he's he's got a small role off the bench, right? Like, you know, he can he can kind of flirt with 20 minutes, and if he does, you know, he's got a decent path to to paying off off value. But really, what you're you know what you're doing here. With with Godfrey is kind of playing the, you know the the game theory angle, right? Do you think that you know Shefflin or or Hall gets you know gets into foul trouble going against some of those Arizona bigs? If so, you know that opens up a lane for Godfrey. So really more of an ancillary piece, and in, in particularly where you're fading some of the the starting forwards for the Clemson side. We've got some uh, man, this live chat is absolutely on fire. Here. Here's the deal with this. Before we get to the live chat, we, we see it. We appreciate you, and we'll get to you in a second. Here's the deal. In terms of the matchup, 
when we're talking about looking for those little bits of the game that can make a difference in a player going from 35 to 46 fantasy, you know, like those things that could give you, mm-hmm. Paul can pull Balo away from the basket a little bit. Shefflin could really have a huge game if all of that works out how I think it's going to. I think Shefflin at 6,600, I'm not into Hall here. Uh, Jeff saying how Hall makes him crazy. <laughs> oh, not to be PJ's grandpa. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if it's the talent is definitely there, like you said there, Jeff. Um, and then, and then David even chiming back in asking about a Clark yeah. Hall stack. I mean, yeah. is definitely one way to get in, Mike. What do you say about about that sort of a stack? Yeah, I honestly like uh, two from this game. Whether it's Hall Clark, whether it's Gerard Hunter, whether it's Gerard Hall, whether it's Shifflin and Hunter, like I'm just gonna take two on every lineup and just pray that this Arizona pace, which Arizona we've watched enough to know Arizona yeah. gets its way a lot of the time. And we've yeah. seen uh Clemson go with people too. Clemson Clemson will run up and down people too. So um yeah, I I'm finding myself like wanting to play two Clemson guys because the price is right, because Clark can drag your uh you know that total uh salary down uh or your average salary down it's not without its risk but the guy's playing 35 minutes like he, i could just see it now key, you know key johnson putting him in foul trouble in the first five minutes of the game so um <laughs> yeah that's where that's why i'm playing a ton of lineups though like you use those game theories and from there maybe i pull off clark and slot in some chauncey wiggins with you know a, a hunter and a pj hall so that's how i have that's how i look at it and how you, how you can have successful um small slate uh, type victories on large fields. First of all, don't don't you put that voodoo, that foul trouble voodoo out into the universe <laughs> like that, good yeah. sir. I, I beg of you, please. Uh, before we move on to the next game here, I mean the next side, I should say of Arizona. I wanted to make sure we shout out our guy Joel. Is it Joel or Joel? Joel. Snow in the chat. Joel probably. Joel saying just started listening, guys. You help me make some money. Thank you. Hopefully you guys can throw in some player props oh, that we can use. Well, you know, if you follow us over at Later, One Hand Done CBB, that's where the good stuff lies. We're definitely going to – you got anything we're going to drop maybe later on tonight, Mike, or what do you think? I know we have the course we're dropping, but, yeah, price picks we'll, we'll probably uh, do on Twitter probably tomorrow. Once later we get, in the week. Yeah, we, you might even week. see somebody's bright, shining face – on a video doing that, maybe Nate C. Hustle, maybe your boy, maybe the conductor hops in the old engine car and goes, and there he is. I got Nate C. Hustle dropping the fire emojis. But Joel, thanks for thanks for hanging out for the kind words. We definitely appreciate you hopping in the live chat and uh, and sharing that with us. Definitely appreciate that. Make sure everybody hits that subscribe button as we move on to my pick to win the whole dadgum thing. Arizona, another eight guys checking in here, Mike, led by, led by my son's favorite player and the man whose John Hancock is on the jersey that will go to the one and done bracket invitational champion that is being pulled over. There it is right there. Shout out right there. Caleb Love and the Arizona Wildcats, Mike. What's the haps? Well, I mean, yeah, he's in play every slate. <laughs> it's just whether or not you want to take the whether you want to take the ride. And <laughs> what did you I say mean, earlier? There's only so many more games he can hurt you. <laughs> he's in that pool too, man. Only so many it. more games he can just God, like I can just see the Pac-12 tournament in his game log. Man, um, but Ben, <laughs> isn't it? I said this last night. Uh, on the recap, like you could see him going for like 48 fantasy points or you could see him going for seven at any time. Yeah. And I brought it up in terms of what he would do against UNC, but really you could believe any of that at any <laughs> time from him. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a roster that, uh, especially when you're in a, a God, like he's just one of those guys, man. Um, love it when he hits, you just hate it when he doesn't. So, I'm not going to talk anybody off playing Caleb Love because we know the upside. Um, he, I, I don't know how he should be able to run circles around Gerard and Hunter. So, like, I don't know how they're really going <laughs> to 
how they're really going to be able to guard him. It's just whether or not he can shoot the ball that night. So he should be able to get get to where he wants. Um, they're not gonna they're not gonna be able to slow him down. It's just whether or not he's shooting well. So yes, Caleb Love, uh, absolute nice tournament play here. Balo sitting at seventy nine hundred. Uh, you know, Mama Rocks in the comments saying, "Jay, that's what happened in the UNC game. Hall kept Baycott busy running around, shit heated, uh, heated up." Yeah. So yeah, I mean, if if Balo is going to be pulled away from the basket, like I. I'm not. I'm not as excited, right? Um, especially when Caleb Love's right there for a hundred dollars more. But like, he's flashing f- nearly five x at this price, pretty consistently outside the most recent game, um, which you can kind of just toss out for the most point uh, because PJ Hall just doesn't care about rebounding. Uh, you know, you got Key Johnson in there along with Balo that should be able to to kind of have their way on the glass. It'd be nice if Hall actually cared about rebounding. Uh, Cause then we could have a, you know, a real ma- a real battle inside. So I feel like he's got opportunities for, uh, you know, when he's not being pulled away from the basket of, uh, you know, being able to get some putbacks, but there's also, you know, playing PJ Hall, that's not fun going all over the place, potential foul trouble uh, for Balo. So I kind of like Key Johnson again, and he's 6,400. Now the minutes are sitting in the mid thirties. Like you, you'll absolutely love that. I mean, he's basically played 33 plus and, three of the last five. So I feel pretty comfortable saying he's going to get 32 to 35 minutes here. Uh, rates across the board. You absolutely love them. Like the usage rates only 19%, but he does a little bit of rebounding. Can get you some assists. He's really good on the defensive end, shooting 40% from three, just a, uh, just like a solid cash play. But every now and then, man, he will pop off for a big, big game. I don't have much interest in Kylan Boswell at 6,200. I know he had the ceiling game against Long Beach, out, you take away that game, and one, you've got Caleb Love taking basically all the shots. Uh, you have, you know, Johnson and Bala there. You've got the guys off the bench. Larson's there. So I don't have much interest in, in Kylan Boswell. Um, I would rather take a shot at paying down for the cheaper cheaper guards. Um, my preference would be uh, Jaden Bradley. He's 5,200. Coming off the 32-piece. I uh, transferred from Alabama last year, uh, you know, Guy usually living in the high teens, right? But for fifty two hundred, uh, you don't mind that type of upside. Um, tournament option only because he's only going to play, you know, twenty minutes or so. So, you know, if you're thinking like a heavy game stack in this game, and you need to get a cheap piece to go along with Clark, like Bradley, I think is probably the way to try to do that. Uh, unless you're going like Key Johnson. Um, at 6,400, but even that is probably too expensive for uh, you have to play some other cheapies if you're really heavy stacking this game. So, yeah, man, uh, like Krivas, if you want to play the, the narrative that like maybe Balo gets into foul trouble or Key Johnson gets into foul trouble, I mean, he's there. He's uh, he's 3,600. Um, it, it ain't going to be pretty, but everyone's in play, right? Uh, well, in nine minutes, right? Yeah, nine minutes. I mean, <laughs> it's not, but the thing is, is like he's not going to play nine minutes if Balo doesn't. Yeah, if Balo has two fouls six minutes in the game, he's not going to play nine minutes. He's going to play 14 or 15 minutes at that point. Or Key Johnson. Well, well, Key Johnson probably not because Key Johnson, you can probably run a, another guard out there uh, with him because of his toughness. So, uh, yeah, man, it's uh, obviously a Balo out there and you can run four guards around him. Key Johnson, you might be able to run five guards or four guards around him. But I don't know because Clemson likes to play big. Like Shifflin and Hall, they ain't coming off the floor unless they're in foul trouble. So, yeah, I mean he's there. I don't. I wouldn't prioritize him. He's like a tertiary type play unless you're just trying to get cute <laughs> and uh, need to save some salary. So, so Eric, like, what uh, what say you on Larson, man? I don't ever play Larson, so I'm I'm a I'm a spend up to a ball a ball of love guy, and I'm also a, a Key Johnson guy. So what say you on Larson that sits there at 6,700? If if you like Mike have not been playing Pele Larson, you're probably on the right side of that proposition for the better part <laughs> of the year, right? Like another you know super boom bust kind of guy. He, he kind of just gets lost in the shuffle at his at his price tag, and he he doesn't really have the the top end ceiling that you're you're looking for, right? We say this with him coming off of a, a 32, so you know it's it's not completely out of the question, but. You know, those those types of outbursts are few and far between. You know, it's just I, I kind of have a hard time, you know, playing him in large fields. You know, if you believe that Caleb Love is going to be a popular option and you want to create a little bit of leverage, you can pivot to Pele Larson. You know, that's that's probably the most 
kind of defendable case that you can make for him. His his assist rate is is not bad. He's 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 handing out uh handing out dimes at a at a twenty percent clip. So you know if you really just want to you know completely overload this game, he'll be in the mix. But you know right on the right on the cusp between secondary and tertiary is where Pelle Larson lives for me. Um, the only other name of note here for me is uh, is going down to to KJ Lewis four point six K like. He's he's one of the he's one of the value plays that has a little bit of pop to his game, right? He's coming off of a twenty, you know. He's put up some, you know, twenty sixes, kind of mid to high twenties before, you know that that five to six x ceiling is is absolutely there. But also, he can turn around and get you a three or a seven, right? So you're uh, you're you're definitely rolling the dice a little bit with with KJ Lewis. You know, he'll, he'll have to make the the absolute most of his limited shot attempts, right? He's taken. Know two, three, four shot attempts per game. Will randomly go off and put up ten against USC, which is clearly the outlier in the equation. So you know, just everything has to break right for him to to pay this off. But you know, in a in a slate where the value feels kind of gross, I I do think that Lewis has a at least a little bit more upside of the of the low tier players, and that's not nothing. That's what we're looking for, man. Like, and as we get into our cores later, especially that tournament core. It's going to be based on a lot of a lot of players that are. It's not as much of a core as just guys that are. are they they fit the profile to smash mm-hmm. in a tournament to get the big bucks. Why right? we're to get those comas? We're looking for comas, not the all not the all coma team. I should say we're looking for no, commas. No. no, no, no comas, only commas. Kelly Larson. I was on Larson when he got thirty two. I made a little money with Larson the other day. Um, okay. It's hard. The it, needle. I don't know, if, don't know if I'm going to be able to go back to that. It's not the one that you hop back on the merry-go-round twice in a row and and ride that pony. I don't think. But who knows? This is March. Sorry, Joel. You're very welcome. We 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 love it when everybody hops in and lets us know that they got those green screens, got that bread cooking. Thanks for hitting those buttons for us and for showing us love. And of course. Not only do you get your bro season basketball up here and our guy Napesy Hustle, but you also get the one and done community and the green screens media universe. Mama Rocks welcoming Joel in. We appreciate that. We love seeing it. Keep the live chat going. Second game of this showcase as we're showing showcasing all four games of the Sweet 16. The lowest total on the board here as is two probably be expected i would say right this is uh look at this san diego state and yukon here again remember we use those ken palm numbers and and metrics obviously here a 138 point implied total really good defensive teams here both top 10 in terms of ken palm metrics and uh neither one of these teams gets up and down there's no arizona type pace in this matchup, thus the low total. So obviously the Aztecs are playing eight to nine. It's just what everybody seems to play at this time. All the good teams just have their eight to nine guys that they know they can run out there and trust. And San Diego State is no different. A team, Mike, that we have seen reach the, the pinnacle, the mountaintop, only to fall just short. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, this one... Kind of tough. Uh, you want to play Jaden Ladee at 8,900 against Donovan Klingon and Samson Johnson? I don't – I mean, he's not going to be owned. <laughs> not with not with the prices of the guys that we just laid out, uh, not with the prices of the guys that we're going to talk about. So you have that, but you got an uphill battle if you if you play Jaden Ladee. I don't know that I would ever – like fully if like mass multi-entering ignore him right like it feels like you maybe could at least have one out of <laughs> out of every 20 uh but that's about it in this spot i'm, I'm not excited about the d it's tough to get to these mid-tier guys like lamont butler and darian trammell you know butler sitting there at 6100 like we know that he can pop off for a 5x game at this price tag uh taking a little more of a backseat than what I thought he would this year, man. Like I, I thought he would really try to kind of take the reins um, this year, but just really kind of does his thing within the offense here. Doesn't really force it. 
so yeah, like I just UConn's never a spot that I, I want to attack. <laughs> They're great on offense. They can put you in foul trouble on that side. They're great on defense. Um, you got the larger spread here. The total isn't great. So I don't know. I Butler probably not for me. Tremel, I know he's coming off the huge game, right? Had the 39 piece. But usually a guy that's living in the 20s. So for 6K, man, I wish he hadn't had that huge game. I really, really wish he hadn't had that, like, huge game. Because, uh, you know, him at, like, 5,800 or 5,700, I would probably – I would maybe consider. But even at that, man, like, the matchup's pretty tough. So Yeah, we're, we're paying for every bit of that 39 fantasy yeah. performance. Like, we just – Absolutely, man. Um, if I had to go somewhere, maybe attacking Alex Caravan. Um, Jay Powell, but probably not. Like, Elijah Saunders is 4K. Uh, I know a lot of people kind of went to him the other day. Uh, he's 4K. Like he's got good rates. Um, he's going to play, you know, mid, you know, low 20s, mid 20s minutes. The game gets out of hand. Maybe we see him play a few more minutes. Um, but man, we talk about it. like this value is just ugly, right? So you'd have to think someone's in foul trouble. Maybe he gets a few more minutes. Maybe he can pump you up to a 4X there, save you, and maybe you get three and a half X and you, you hit all your studs. Um, that's one way to kind of see Elijah Saunders. Miles Bird also coming off a nice game. I mean, his rate's like, I can't wait to play him next year. He's not going to be at this price tag, obviously, but he's 3,600. Uh, we know, like, it's just UConn, man. Like, I don't – like, he's not going to play very many minutes, so I don't really see uh, really see a point to a lot of this. Honestly, uh, Eric, uh, Micah Parrish and Reese Waters kind of in the same boat for me on the in the backcourt uh, behind Butler and uh, – I know Parrish starts, but, you know, behind Butler and Trammell for me, as far as guys that maybe their, their price tag's a little more interesting, what are your thoughts on on these guys? It's hard to feel great about uh, really anyone in in this in this game, at least at least on this side, right? Like with with Michael Parrish, you know, because he's playing high 20, high 20, high 20s minutes and you know sitting at 5k flat like i i wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised if he's popular right like there aren't there aren't a whole lot of guys that have an 18 percent usage a 21 percent shot 17 percent rebound rate for a guard handing out dimes at 13 percent. he can chip he can dip there's a, there's a lot of things to like about how his stats profile and you you don't see many guys sitting at 5k flat whenever that's the case and in particular on this kind of value starved slate so all of this, you know, kind of sets up for a, a fairly popular Micah Parrish in my mind. And and honestly, with with good enough reason, right? I'll I'll definitely have a decent amount of him and in my in my player pool and rotating around. Uh Reese Waters is kind of the uh the antithesis of that, right? He's 4.1k. He's kind of the pivot off of Parrish, which is weird to say for a 5k player, but um, you know, a lot of that has to do with with Waters' volatility. He is sitting at a near season low price tag, so we we definitely we have built our fortunes thus far buying the dips. So Waters checks that box, right? He's got four to five x upside. You know, only only five of his last twenty two. So definitely some meat on the bone, right? He starts seeing a few more of those go through. He's got a pretty good line of sight to paying off uh, essentially a four k price tag. So don't mind going to either of these two guys, at least as we talk about kind of the the prospectus for these Aztecs. And a lot of that has to do with, with the price tag, right? You just got a little bit more, a little bit more margin for error in, in them getting to that number. Jeff asking if we're going swimming in the waters, if we're, hey, if we're dipping our definitely. toes in the waters, oh, the shark waters. Uh, but nah. uh, waters, you know, you could, uh, but here's the deal. Paris is only shooting 29% from deep. Right. But the good thing is, is that ain't stopping him from shooting them. Like he's making them at forty eight percent, so that's the deal for me. Is if if Paris just makes a few threes, he's just gonna shoot them. Mm -hmm. He shot. He's only shot fewer than four threes twice in the last ten games or so. Uh, he's still putting them up, and he shot as many as eight or nine in a game. So if if for some reason they can find <laughs> a few possessions here. And they make the most out of those possessions. Micah Parrish is somebody that if he gets hot, they're going to go to him. He shoots the ball enough, 150 attempts from three, and he only shoots one. It doesn't matter. 
guys that are going to shoot the ball are guys that we need to consider putting into our lineup. So I think I'm a little bit higher on Parrish than Waters, but I definitely understand either one of those guys. Mama Rocks, you are not alone. Uh, there's quite a few poor brackets out there that are, would be used for squirrel paper uh, as well. Uh, my, I squirrel I paper. Be, yeah, I love that. And I imagine that's, <laughs> that, that means like, I don't know, what is scroll? Does that mean, like, for, for them to, like, poop on? Or is it, like, them to play with? Or what do you mean by squirrel paper? I, for me, it was immediately, like, bottom of the, of the pen sort of a That's thing. what I was thinking, too. Yeah, yeah, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Jason B., evening to you, hey, too, yo. Jason. And with the good news again, another breadhead coming in to talk about the old green screen. Second in the big GPP and and the $33 two entry in the NIT slate. Way to go, Jason. Good my stuff, guy. my guy. Good to see you in the chat. Thanks for checking out with us, or hanging out with us, I should say, as always, as Jeff drops the congratulations as right after Mama Rocks did as well. We love it. We love the, po- <clears throat> excuse me, the positive energy of the green screens media universe here on one and done hit those like and subscribe buttons let's get to the yukon side of this now um a little more expensive to get to the guys that we think we would want to play on this side a lot of star power this is there's a reason why like 26 percent of the brackets had yukon winning the whole thing some rough estimate of that like a quarter of people basically thought yukon was going to win which is amazing uh, but the reason is, it's not always about the X's and the O's. It's the Jimmys and the Joes. And Mike, UConn has some Jimmys and some Joes. I mean, this game in general, I mean, two top 10 defenses, a low total, it feels like a one off for like the entire. Like, I might only, I might just cross this game off or I might just play one guy um, for this entire game. So, who that is, I'm going to take a, quite a few shots at it. I mean, there's Newton and Klingon, right? They're. <laughs> 8,500 8, and 8,400 for a reason. Tristan Newton, I mean, he's been fantastic this year. Uh, just outstanding rates across the board. Um, you know, he's going to get the, the, the Lamont, uh, Lamont Butler defense. I would assume Darian Trammell is probably running around uh, with uh, with Cam Spencer. But, yeah, that's a that's a steep, steep price tag there for Tristan Newton. Um, we know he has – 45 to 50 every time he steps on the court. Same thing with Donovan Klingon. We called the the 50 bomb um, against Northwestern. There was absolutely nobody that could guard him. Uh, now San Diego State's going to have a few more bigger bodies than Northwestern, <laughs> um, which kind of scares me for Jaden Ladee and his, his prospects double. of being able to yeah. stay on the floor. He's a smart player, though, and he's very strong. So mm-hmm. uh, Donovan Klingon at 8,400. It's appealing. It's appealing. Uh, he's been 52 in the last two out of three. So <laughs> he's coming in, uh, you know, red hot. Even a 36 will, will do uh, at 8,400. That's over 4X. Yeah, he's, he's a phenomenal play. It's just how do you get to him, right? Can't Spencer because he's living in that mid tier. Like the sirens kind of go off for me as a guy that has 35 to 40 fantasy point uh ceiling here i don't think tramel is going to be guarding tristan newton feel like he's too small so if you get tramel running around with cam spencer yeah he might swipe one but also it feels like spencer is going to kind of be able to get to the basket um also be able to knock shoot shoot over him uh 44 from 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 long range here for for cam spencer so uh yeah i've got uh i've got pretty pretty solid interest in cam spencer here because his price tag has come down uh, even though he's still putting up basically 4x, um, like him for cash uh, in tourneys, he still has that upside to to get you there. Uh, Castle, I don't, I don't think so at 5900. Like he's a tremendous freshman, uh, but imagine he goes to the draft this summer. So it's just not really there for me for ceiling type from him. Um, really has to have everything go right for him. Uh, the focal points on the offense are, are pretty much the other four guys in the starting lineup. It feels like. Uh, every now and then for two minute stretches, he'll he'll do, you know, he'll he'll take a few shots. But yeah, I think I'm just trying to find out if I can get to Newton and Klingon, and then really like Spencer in the middle there. Mama Roxanne Hassan Diara. Uh, yeah, I mean we always try to do this right. I don't even know if it's Diara in a blowout because Diara plays. He's playing solid minutes regardless of the blowout. He's basically the sixth man. Yeah, I mean he's got 15 to 20 fancy point upside, which is probably enough uh, on this slate. 
probably enough. I mean, three to three, three and a half X is, is, is really solid from value plays under 5k. If you can get that and you hit the right, um, you know, top end guys, you're going to be, you're going to be living good. So I think DR is going to be so popular. Yeah. I would imagine he's pretty popular, especially with the spread. You feel like if he gets out of hand, he'd get a few more minutes. As a guy that already, you know, kind of lit, like he's giving you at least, at least 11 in the last five, right? And there's and just no value, man. At least like, 11. Just, so, I mean, there's, that's no not other gonna, va- there's no value. Yeah, I mean, 11's not going to get you there. I mean, he's got to go, you know, get into 15 to really get you there. But he, he gets there pretty consistently, you know, 14, 15 pretty consistently. So, I don't mind a stop yard. Jalen Stewart's probably is just not playable for me in a tougher matchup. So, uh, Eric, that leaves one guy, man. A uh, guy that uh, I haven't played a lot of, at least later in the year, was really – Really used him as a contrarian piece to Donovan Klingon um, earlier in the season. It paid off in a in a bunch of spots. But let's say you want Alex Caravan. You have been playing Alex Caravan because he hasn't been getting to a ceiling pretty much ever, right? You know, it's it's been quite a while since we've we've seen one of those ceiling games that you really need from a mid six Ks guy. I mean, look, he's he's still playing, you know, thirty ish minutes pretty pretty routinely. He's still taking a ton of shots, right? He's got almost 200 three pointers on the season. He's rebounding pretty well, right? So, like, he's you know he's got some secondary stats to boost him up. You know, maybe this is the the game where those shots go through a little bit more. Um, you know, he he could get to that ceiling. You know, if, if he's if he is to have his ceiling, you certainly want to have him in the in the low six Ks when that happens. But the likelihood of that coming to fruition against the San Diego State pace and defense. Is is pretty limited, right? So not a not a huge priority for me with with Caravan. Um, you know, scrolling through the the rest of the the rosters here. You know, we talked about this a little bit with with Diara. You know, the the kind of foul trouble or more realistically blowout game theory. You know, I I think if if that actually comes to pass, that probably benefits Samson Johnson more than anyone, right? Because he would have you know by by an order of magnitude the largest increase to his his amount of playing time, right? Like you know, if, if he's if he's even getting just a, a handful more minutes, kind of getting to that like north of fifteen, maybe pushing twenty, he can do you can do a fair amount of damage at three point eight K, right? You know, you you mentioned guys getting you three and a half, four X being all that you really need. In a in a large field, if you know, if you believe that we're talking about uh, a blowout or you know, think that Klingon might end up in foul trouble, you know, you, you can you can make a case for for Samson Johnson, but you're you're really you're you're playing the the kind of game script angle there, and and things really have to break his way to to pay off. Are you telling me you don't want to talk to Samson? You don't. You're not really <laughs> want to talk to Samson. Talk to Samson. Yeah. The moon would be a nice place to be right now. Maybe I'll maybe I'll go there after the show. Um, Mama Mama Rocks, thanks for cleaning up the confirmed. Uh, the the, the uh, little slight bit of confusion there. It is confirmed. Shit paper it is for squirrel paper shit. Yes. Kind of assume that for sure. Jason uh, saying that the wife is a girl's night on Thursday. So just you and the dog and some CDB. Well, we're glad you're here uh, rocking with us. Oh, look at that right there. I got AJ Ant getting in there. Wish... Oh, Texas A&M fighting Aggies are still in this tournament. They got shafted instead of having to face Houston in, in a round of 32. We talked a lot about that, just how those seedings being a little bit rougher. Some of these teams that playing themselves just high enough to be an eight or a nine seed, and what's your reward is <laughs> a freaking one like that, unless it's Purdue last year. <laughs> You're gonna play an eight <laughs> or a nine year. seed. So not this year though. He he made it through. And then before we move on, Mama Rocks, one more thing in there. Caravan, if you think Ladie gets clinging into foul trouble, little little game theory there. One way to approach it. We're gonna have to talk ourselves into something into some place here. Cause I mean we're getting down to it. What else are we betting our what else are we put, dropping our our location lean on other than some good old Sweet 16, Elite 8, Final 4, Championship Game action. Gotta love it. Got to love it. And if you love what you're seeing right now, hit those like and subscribe buttons. Make sure you push them. Do push them and push them good, okay? You can do it. I believe in you. Push it real good. All right. Do those, do those things. Push the button. Turn on the bells. 
Ring my bell. Do all that stuff. Second game of the showcase down. Third game. You own deck. Here we go. Up to the plate here. Alabama and North Carolina come on and raise up. We all want North Carolina to win this one, and we want Arizona to win so we can get the Caleb Love Bowl. We need it. But most importantly here, 170-point That's a lot. Total. I'm, I, I, had to, I had to pause for a second. I didn't even believe what I said coming out of my mouth. Nobody understands the words that are coming out of your mouth. Yes, they understand 170-point implied total here, according to Ken Palm. Why is that, Jay and Eric and Mike? Why, why is there a 170-point implied total here? Mm. Well, how about a couple of top 40 tempo teams and a couple of teams that can score 100 on any given night they might not score that against each other in this one but you know the firepower is there let's start with the crimson tide mike we're in a couple of more guys out there than we've seen actually getting to a 10 man rotation some of the time here so mark sears 9k flat very interesting play obviously just coming off a 58 what about sears and the rest of the tide roll tide <laughs> so, you, I mean, Alabama's offense, fourth in offensive efficiency. North Carolina, sixth in defensive efficiency. Um, what's going to win out here? Well, I don't – I mean, Alabama's going to want to get out and run. North Carolina's going to want to run with them. The thing is, UNC's not going to turn you over. Like, they just – they just they don't have those type of players that are going to really, you know, force the issue and turn you over. Um, so, you know, a lot of people are going to go to Mark Sears. Because one, I believe he, I believe he was on the optimal. Obviously, a fifty-eight piece, right? You're on the optimal. <laughs> one of people with a lot of money. People don't want to go yeah, right dude. back to that well against North Carolina, which should be fireworks. I don't mind going to that well in tournaments either. You better figure out like the cheap piece that you play with them. Um, and even so, like three X, <laughs> probably good enough if he goes for another fifty spot. Uh, I, mean, I like North Carolina in this matchup in general, so I'm not as high on some of the Alabama guys. That serious price tag is kind of crazy, especially when Estrada sits there at 8,100. Now, Estrada doesn't have like the the 50 fantasy point ceiling, but he's you know a guy that can get you into the 40s, um, you know mid 40s here. You know, use rates awesome, shot rates awesome, the rebounding rates better than Sears, the assist rates better than Sears, the steal rates the same as Spears. Now, he doesn't shoot the ball as well as Sears. So <laughs> if you happen to have a night where Sears doesn't shoot well and Estrada does shoot well, that that uh, you know that leverage right there is pretty significant, especially with the price tag being almost a $1,000 difference. So I'll be playing some Aaron Estrada for sure, um, as I hope people will go to Mark Sears. If Mark Sears burns me with another 50-plus, then you know what? I'm on to Friday slate. Like, <laughs> this is what it is, right? Um the rest of Alabama, though, guys, it's uh, it's kind of like I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, we have a few more of these teams left where it's like I don't want to do this. Nick Pringle sitting there at 6K. I find him always interesting for tournaments, just always interesting as a 5X, uh, 6X type of guy. I just feel like Baycott's going to put him into serious foul trouble. If he's able to keep a cool head, they almost got into a fight against Grand Canyon. Uh, for good reason, um, <laughs> if he's able to just chill out. He got a technical on the bench, too, like complaining about a call after he was pulled out for being a hothead. <laughs> so, I mean, this guy completely volatile, fouls a lot, but his upside is crazy. Like, he doesn't have a high usage rate, but for not for a guy not having a high usage rate and shot rate, you know, he rebounds the shit out of the ball. He can block shots, like putbacks. Like, he's a guy that can put up 30 fantasy points. I wish he was not 6,000. I wish he was, like, 5,500, 5,400. I would – I'd much rather uh, at least take that ride and, and enjoy it maybe a little bit more. Uh, you know, you cut five minutes out of that playing time. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, Nick Pringle uh, clearly in the GPP discussion. Latrell Reitzel is going to be in. I find him very interesting, right? Uh, a guy that's going to you know, shoot a lot of threes for them. A guy that's won people tournaments. So definitely in play. I feel like he's probably going to garner a lot of ownership, even coming off the concussion or whatever. I believe he had a, what did he have a concussion last game. I believe he only played eleven minutes in that one. Yeah, uh, yeah. So exactly, uh, ex expected to play. 
And there's a guy that we pay 6K for. So why wouldn't you pay 5,600 in this type of game environment for sure? Rylan Griffin, I feel like might be the cheapest. Uh, I feel like the most popular cheapy at 4,900. Uh, I played 30 minutes last game. I don't know that he's going to necessarily reach 30 minutes again. I, mean, I feel like he's high 20s, right, or secure. Uh, Three-point dependent because he doesn't do much else. He's going to have to knock down his three, shooting 38% on the year. Uh, but I feel like people are going to see what he did last game. You know, right still kind of hurts him playing the entire game. He'll probably play mid-20s minutes. Uh, but certainly a guy that uh, we know has 20 to 25, 30 fantasy point output if he's able to put it all together and put some counting stats with it. Because he's going to be so popular, one, I'll go with the masses on some of my lines, and on the other ones, I just I don't want any part of it. I just I really don't with Reitzel enough. Reitzel's out. He's the most popular play on the board uh, as far as people 5K and under. Uh, rest of these guys, man, like Jaron Stevenson, just not playing. This doesn't do enough for me at 3,500. Muhammad Diabate was kind of the reason why Alabama advanced past Grand Canyon. If you watch the yeah. very end of that game, it was like, what is happening? What, Diabate is just doing his thing. But 19 fantasy points coming off the 15 from, from Charleston. Like his usage rate is 22%, and he's got an amazing rebounding rate, a 7% shot block rate. We just need minutes from this guy. Absolutely, we just need minutes from this guy. If we want a yellow here, if uh, if Eric, your boy uh, Grant Nelson here, <laughs> don't do it. He's only gonna he's only gonna play a few minutes because uh, he's gonna don't foul. Do it. <laughs> I mean, I like Diabate uh, as a large field GPB option, but uh, we shouldn't ignore Grant Nelson completely <laughs> with this yes, ceiling if should. he would ever play high no. thirty minutes. <laughs> I I'm for forget talking about this slate. I'm trying to figure out where. Where I did you wrong to the point where you're going to associate me with Grant Nelson as my boy. 5.7K, <laughs> like you said, Mike, this basically the last month of Grant Nelson has him been getting into the game and then just immediately fouling people and finding his way to the bench. Like he just seems entirely disinterested in, in being out there and participating. So Four, obviously, 5,000 for the last five. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, we we talk about boom bust players, you know. I'd I'd say he's probably more bust boom than anything else, right? Like bust the, bust. Yeah, bust 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 maybe boom. But because the boom is on the radar and he's five point seven K, like there he you, is. You, you gotta <laughs> you gotta mix him in a little bit, right? Like we, we talk about plays where like you click the button and if it if it burns you, you move on to Friday. This is the epitome of that with Grant Nelson, but I mean, where else are you going to find a mid five k guy that can get you forty five plus, right? Where like else it's... are you going to find a mid five k guy that's just going to rip your heart in half after uh, all as much the expectations the th- as you have? We're, we're so done like, with these teams. It just uh, means more I'm when not... Grant Nelson does it. It means more. It it does. He's he is he has cut us so deeply. But you you gotta you gotta sprinkle in some exposure, right? Um, you know, the, the lineups where you have them, if you pop off are immediately going to be 99th percentile. And if he, <laughs> if he, if he, if he does the Grant Nelson thing, you burned a couple of lineups, which isn't, which isn't a bad trade off, I guess is really the, the argument that I'm trying if to make. If you have a thing, if you, the, if you have the Grant Nelson thing, it makes me not want you to be a thing on my roster. If Dude, you, I might go 40 for 40 Grant Nelson and just like, and Yo. just yellow it. <laughs> it. I mean, if if he hits, you're gonna you're gonna win first through forty on this Thursday slate. <laughs> <laughs> the thing oh, is, is the thing yeah. is, is I, as much as I don't like it, you know, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have him at least once. I can't help I can't help myself. I can't help myself. Yeah. Like I wish I knew how to quit you, the ultimate freaking Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> and uh, Heath Ledger moment right now. Me and Grant Nelson just making sure he, I, I'm telling him I wish I knew how to quit him. I can't, Grant. I just bonfire. can't quit you. I can't. I can't quit you, Grant. I wish I could, but I can't. Mama well, Ross, we well, to... Oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. You hit Nelson. I forgot. I think we got one more guy. I think you wanted to get to Eric on that on that side, right? I don't know if I'd say I, I I wanted to get to him, but you know we we <laughs> promised to go to go deeper into these lineups, so we will we will make good on that promise. 
you know, Sam Walters is here at 3.7K, right? He's a guy that's getting you low teens minutes. I, I think more than anything, like he he shoots threes and he shoots them fairly well. Um, you know, gets you a little bit of rebounding and a pace up. Like, why why not? Right. Like, you know, only in the largest of fields, even even at that, he is a you know, a secondary secondary type option, right? But the you know, the the large rotation that Alabama likes to trot out there and rip our hearts out with is, you know, it makes him a little bit tougher to play than, than some of the other guys at, at this price. But maybe Grant Nelson gets in a little bit more foul trouble and maybe Sam Walters picks up another minute or two, right? So uh, maybe. Um, something to mention, but not a priority by any means. I was just so excited to get to the North Carolina side. I didn't even, we hadn't even covered all of our guys on the Bama side yet. We just got to cover the water boy too. He's going to play five minutes uh, <laughs> for Alabama as well. Yeah. <laughs> Mix him in there. The, the guy, the, the manager, do they need to get, When's the last time we saw a good stat line? They, they do the team manager games for the championship <laughs> yeah. game, right? Like, don't they? They have like yeah. a team manager game that they play for that. Yeah. Um, well, congratulations to the Alabama team manager. They will be on the court and live playing seven minutes in two, three minute or four minute spurts. Congratulations, everybody, on that. Let's get to the North Carolina side now. Uh, a little bit tighter. Uh, on this side, in terms of rotation, Mama Rock's asking, is it safe to stack Baycott and Ingram, or do they take too much away from each other? So, uh, and, and he's just, uh, I guess we're just skipping over. We're just not even going to talk about RJ Davis or <laughs> Mama Rock's. Like, we're just going to just breeze over that guy. But again, uh, another, another uh, group, Mike, here, where the top of the, uh, the player pool is uh, mighty pricey. Yeah, uh, RJ Davis is eighty two hundred, and for tournaments that is absolutely way too cheap for a guy that can score 40, 50 fantasy points. We don't need to talk you into playing RJ Davis in tournaments. Some shot rate, assist rate, and chip in some steals. Shoot forty one percent from three. You're gonna run up and down with Alabama. Uh, yeah, I just uh, I, I feel like I feel like it's gonna be pretty popular at 8200 it's kind of tough right because people are gonna have to make decisions here i mean you got the baycott ingram which mama rocks is bringing up i feel like for tournaments you should play rj davis uh baycott right now seems uh, at his price tag feels a little i'm gonna say a little more cashy because you can get inside and, and bang these guys around i mean unc is gonna have an advantage on the offensive glass he also gets the the shot blocking plus so i mean he's good for cash or tournaments he's playing so well uh recently i mean remember when he was 6800 yeah uh, he should be probably be 9K, uh, so 8,200. Yeah, I have interest in getting one of these two guys in on pretty much every one of my lineups. Um, every one of my tournament lineups will probably feature one of RJ Davis or Baycott, which is kind of scary because that means that I'm probably Xing off somebody, which makes me really like the Clemson guys. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, you want to be in this 170 point total, and you've seen these guys pay it off. Time in and time out at 5X, at damn near 6X sometimes. Uh, so, yeah, flip a coin. I probably would just go 50 50 on these guys. Harrison Ingram, you know, uh, paid us off. I think it's what, 60 or 6,900 last game. Uh, put up 30 fantasy points basically. He's 7,100. Um, you know, earlier in the year when Baycott, when his price was kind of just always fluctuating, we're like, why is Baycott this? Well, it's because Harrison Ingram was having. He's like massive 40 fantasy point games because he would get 11 points, sneak across a, a, set, a six, six, 16, 14 rebound, double, double, and he would chip in a couple of stocks and a few assists. So, yeah, I mean, I've got interest in Harrison Ingram too for, for large field tournaments. I, I don't have much interest in Cormac Ryan at 5,800. I feel like that price tag, even though like this is a pace up and you should be able to just get off a bunch of threes, I just don't know at 5,800 that I, I really – we want to get invested with the guy that's that's this shot dependent. Um, I need some peripherals to to get me to a ceiling, right? Like he's gonna have to hit. I mean, he's gonna have to hit like six threes if it's if, if he's not gonna do anything else uh, to even start to remotely scare me. Um, <laughs> so that'll put him at that twenty fantasy point, and then he's gonna have to get some rebounds. He's gonna maybe have to luck over a steal. So. I don't have as much interest in Cormac Ryan, although I think he's an interesting game stack piece if you're going heavy in this game. I don't 
man, like there's that split at point guard, Eric. Uh, Cadeau and Trimble, man. Like, I feel like they could maybe be keys to the slate. I don't, I don't know, because a lot, a lot of us were going to look right at Davis, Baycott, and Ingram, and we're going to want to play one of them. And it's like, how else can we cheaply get into this game? And that's the position that is not as clear cut, but the price tags clearly reflect that. So, what are your thoughts on Cadeau and, and Seth Trimble? Yeah, guys that are that are kind of uh, related in terms of their their fate on on this slate, right? Like with with Cadeau and, and Trimble, you know, where where one is going off, the other is is having you know kind of their floor game and vice versa. What I like about them is they they both have their the the ball in their hand a lot, right? Cadeau at five point one k, you know, he's he's rocking a nearly thirty percent assist rate. He is in that timeshare with Trimble, so you know it's it's going to be, uh, you know, a, a bit bit streaky, um, you know, where where he's getting there or where he's going to come up short, you know, for for Cadeau, like he's he's really got to knock down the the open looks that he's that he gets. If he if he does, you know, he can he can pay off this price tag, a a pretty interesting stacking option in general because of that high assist rate. So, you know, Cadeau as a standalone option has been something that we've been super excited about throughout the course of the season but in this game environment in the context of this slate you know looking for for ways to get onto this unc side don't mind it with cadeau if cadeau you know does does get a four game set trimble's right there at at 3.5k you know the i mean the price tag is obviously in, insane you you love guys that are down here in in the the low to mid 3ks he is that kind of third ball handler in rotation, and he could, you know, he could easily put up fifteen to twenty, especially if if Cadeau's having an off night, or alternatively, he could do absolutely nothing if Cadeau's playing well, right? So, um, you know, the 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 pace, you know, the the context of the slate suggests taking a couple shots on on Trimble, and both of these guys can be in the mix of sort of secondary stacking options. I wouldn't play either. I wouldn't play them both together, but trying to to sort of balance my exposures across them individually is going to be my my game plan for them tomorrow, on Thursday, I should say. Yeah, you can you could probably, in terms of playing people together, circling back to Mama Rox's original question of stacking Baycott and Ingram, yeah, you can play them together. Like, absolutely, you can. Um, it just feels, for me, the ceiling is probably limited for how much you're paying to stack in this slate and being able to find players to fill in the bottom parts or the, you know, when you're sitting there looking, you're going to have two spots left and you're going to have, you're going to have to average 4,200 apiece. And ladies and gents, there ain't a lot to find. Uh, around that price tag so but again like if you're trying to i'm all about stacking up this game this side though even if you go two on north carolina side and pick an alabama player like if you're going to yellow with nelson um and then you can throw a cadeau in there and a baycott or a davis and a cadeau even or if you wanted to go down um uh harrison ingram just makes me can never figure this guy out, but either way, I, I do, uh, I do really think I'll be stacking quite a bit. Again, Mike, you're, we're picking and choosing our battles in terms of where we're stacking, taking two players from this one, always going to have two play. You said you're going to have Davis or Baycott in every single lineup. Like that's your stand that you take in there. Um, and the, and again, if you're looking at these numbers on the banner there on the screen, these are Ken Palm projections and, and lines and numbers and all that jazz. Uh, if you get over to, like, let's say you would go over to DraftKings Sportsbook right now. The over-under is currently 173.5. Even if that goes under a little bit, even if that's five points under that line. Like, both of these teams are getting over 80. These are some massive, this is an absolutely massive total. And the largest total by... A, a couple yeah. dozen almost. That, you know? that line could be off by 10 and it'd still be the hot game total on the board. Exactly. So stacking it up and figuring out ways to get in there. Mama Rocks, get, get creative. We already said it once and we said it twice and we'll say it again. YOLO is the motto indeed. YOLO is the motto. On this slate, 
trying to get 20K, Mama Rocks. I know you are too. Three games down in our showcase, one to go. Make sure if you're hanging out with us, you hit that like and subscribe buttons. We are recording on Tuesday for this Thursday slate. Plenty of time for some stuff to happen. If something crazy does happen, you got to make sure that you're following us at one and done CBB on Twitter, at Get Green Screens on Twitter as well. And then at Get Green Screens over on TikTok is where you might see, you know, somebody's bright, shiny face with some prop bets, or you might even hear our voices or whatever. Who knows? Who knows the, ki- the type of content that we're dropping? But we're dropping it. I mean, how, how many days, how many shows in in six days is this now that you're one and done, bros? He's been on the air. I mean, this is what we want to do. This is what we love to do. This is why we do it this time of the year. And we are thankful that you are here to do it with us. Hop into Illinois and Iowa State. Another very respectable total at 151 implied. And while we have DraftKings pulled up, they have this one at 146. So not as bullish on this one as Ken Palm is. Um, Number one offensive efficiency in Illinois. Number one defensive efficiency in Iowa State. Something's got to give. Something's got to give here. Illinois will get a few more possessions, squeeze a few more possessions out of those Cyclones. So we'll talk about that when we get to them. But let's break down Illinois first as Jeff is hopping in the chat saying he's interested to see if Shannon can Shannon, using the old last name as a verb. Always love that action there. <laughs> uh, not a lot of people have Shannon, if you will, against the Cyclones. A sure team, does. again, that was disrespected coming in, in my opinion. The, the number eight overall team is a slap in the face when they should have very easily been in the conversation for a one seed. Um, they're on a mission right now, but so is Illinois, Mike. Yeah, uh, I like the, the question here, Jeff, and the price tag and the number one defense. <laughs> Should lead to not a lot of people playing Terrence Shannon. And all he's done is go 40 plus in, in the last five, uh, 44 in the last three, uh, has a 51 in there. It's just, uh, I don't, if there's any, any two, <laughs> there's a defense that could cover him or any two guards that can at least challenge him. It feels like he can just get to the free throw line whenever he wants in the college game. Um, I think he's going to be pretty good at the next level. Uh, you know, his defense hasn't really been there this year, but we know he, when he wants to, he can be a really good defensive player. So, yeah, I think the thing for me is, like, when you when you consider 9,100, the fact that that is basically $1,000 more expensive than the UNC guys, the fact that you have to pay $1,000 more than Aaron Estrada, you are paying $100 more than Mark Sears, you are paying more than Klingon and Newton, uh, you're going to be paying more for uh, the, all the Arizona guys and – then damn and basically the most expensive guy in Clemson is seventy three hundred. So it's a tough price tag to get to. I I understand wanting to get forty, but when he's trying ninety one hundred, that's going to take out some of the ceiling for tournaments. Like unless he goes for fifty, I don't really feel bad if he goes for forty four at ninety one hundred because then I'm trying to figure out like where did you spend the rest of your money? Um, you better you better nail. Yeah. Um, it All just makes four- you have to hit like four x on the low end. Mike, all four and a half X's are not created equally. So, and if Terry and Shannon get you four and a half X at 9,100, I think you're going to have a hard time figuring it out, making that yeah, up elsewhere. So I need to, I mean, you need them to get 48.50 in this spot, which I'm not going to bet on that against Iowa State's defense. I've, I've unfortunately had to watch Iowa State's defense under Otzelberger over the last you know couple of seasons with being a Texas fan. So <laughs> I know that's not a lot of fun to go against. Man, all these guys. Marcus Damask, 8,600. Yikes. Like, I know he's been excellent. I just, he, even, he, even when he lists all the guys we just ran through, he's even more, way more expensive than all these other guys. So I don't know why we would need to go here other than being super contrarian on the large field and just pray that they hit a ceiling game against the tough Iowa State defense. Coleman Hawkins is the one guy that I would have a little bit of interest in. One, the price tag, right? Two, he's been playing a little bit better. And three, like you don't have to deal with those guards, right? Like I know they run a bunch of the bunch of guys at the, in the front court for Iowa State. They're always tough in there, but and like Lipsy and Gilbert, <laughs> their steal rates are crazy. So just getting away from 
getting away from those guys and playing a big where, you know, obviously it sometimes struggles on the glass. Um, you know, Hawkins can stretch this defense out a little bit more. Feels like he can be more of a facilitator uh, versus, you know, having Shannon and Damask having to facilitate against those, uh, against that defense. So I think he's kind of in an interesting spot. I don't know that I'll get to anybody really on the Illinois side. Like, there's nothing that really excites me about this side, to be quite honest with you. There's uh, there's Dane Danger, Eric, and uh, Danger. Yeah, I don't want to talk about Dane Danger, so I'm gonna let you give an opinion on Dane Danger and uh, yeah, anybody else you want to talk about. But yeah, for me, it's kind of a stay away on this team, man. I don't know. And that, that is why we are such a good team, because I love talking about Dane Danger. Uh, I don't love playing him quite as much, but he's one of the more interesting sort of case studies in, like, game over in game life. volatility <laughs> anywhere in college basketball, right? Like, in the world. He can get you 28 minutes. He can turn around and play six minutes. He can get you 35 points. He can get you a literal donut. And there isn't really any way to determine when – either of those outcomes is going to pass, right? Like, you know, when, when he's out there, an absolute per-minute monster, you know, m- maybe against this Iowa State front line, like he gets a little bit more run, you know, you you can maybe project him to, to you know, to in turn a bit more productive. But his his range of outcome is, is easily the, the widest on the slate. And it's it's polarized too, right? Like you're, you're not, you're not getting these, you know, four, four and a half X kind of games, right? Like, you're getting him the very top or the very bottom of his range. So definitely a uh, a spin the wheel, roll the dice kind of play. But I'll I'll put him in. He's my he's my guy, and I want to get that upside. Um, you know, but besides that, uh, Ty Rogers is here. You know, he's another guy that um, is obviously facing this very tough defense, and individually doesn't really shoot all that well, right? So, um. No one's going to play him after he's coming off of uh, four and six fantasy point uh, performances, right? So that's really the only positive thing you can say that uh, say about him. Like I, I don't, I don't think that that's even really enough, right? Like he just feels like he's someone to avoid on a side. You know, there isn't really anyone that you feel great about. You might get down to it. You, you could do worse than Ty Rogers if you're staring at, at 5,300 left, 5,400 left in your lineup. Like, you could do worse, but yeah, it's it's going to be tough to, to get there. Our guy, Corey, hopping in that live he loves danger. chat. Loves danger. Who doesn't love a little danger? Watch your back. Get off the floor. We, I wish I knew when he was going to get on the floor. Um, he has not gotten on the floor consistently, but you know, Eric and I, we both love some Dane Danger. And then, of course, the king of the single entry himself, Oof. little top 10 finish this evening in the single entry. Way to go, man. Way to go, Corey. Way to go, my yeah, guy. Let's get that 20K. Yes, let's, let's indeed, let's get that. Let's get that 20K. Maybe, maybe we'll have a little more love for the, for the Iowa State side. Uh, maybe not. Who knows? What do you What do you think, Eric? We'll start with you this time around on this final game of our breakdown here, our showcase. What about the Cyclones playing eight guys, and we we know they defend well. This is again, this is a this is one of the best teams in the country, and was all year. Really. Yeah, um, as is often the case with Iowa State, um, they're getting paced up a little bit uh, against this Illinois side. An Illinois team is. 340th in the country in opponent assist rates. So there are dimes to be had. Uh, Illinois, like UNC, will not turn you over. So, you know, you can kind of get those those clean offensive sets and get your shots off, right? So, you know, both both guards for, for, the, for the Iowa State side are guys that we have been playing a fair amount. It starts with Tom and Lipsy. Uh, he's sitting here, excuse me, at... Um, 7.5k as my uh, as my DraftKings freezes up. Um, he, he's just he's so consistent, right? Like, you know, feels like he's about as close to a cash lock on on the slate as 
uh, as you can kind of find the you know, the pace should give uh, him and Gilbert both the stud guards, um, you know, a, a bit of a booster. And the the price point, you know, Gilbert Gilbert's a little bit cheaper, so that that should drag down ownership for um, for for Lipsy here. And then you know, like as I mentioned off the top, you can't really talk about one without the other. Keishon Gilbert at the other side, seven K flat. Uh, another another cash play type of guy. You know, it, it feels like the upside is is there for this price in tournament. If you know, if it gets the pace going, you know, honestly, both of these guys have have forty point ceilings, right? So I'll I'll probably split it with Lipsy and Cash, and you know, try to win twenty with with Gilbert is where my head is right now. But like, there are plenty of other options on this Iowa State side that um, you know that that can make a little noise itself. Yeah, I mean, nothing that really excites you. I mean, Curtis Jones, he's somewhat interesting because you, you love the pace, right? Like, I, I don't know if I uh, had a little feedback from you, but, you know, you're mentioning that you love you love Lipsy and you love Gilbert there. I mean, you have to like the guards in this game because of the pace, right? Like, you know, I would say it's not as slow as they used to be. I mean, 206 in tempo, so you get paced up by a top 100 team. Um, and your top 50 offense. So uh, you have to feel like Lipsy and Gilbert are going to get theirs, but also Curtis Jones, right? Like guy that takes a lot of threes, um, mm-hmm. kind of sneakier than those other two, right? Um, especially when you consider he's 5,700, like he's a guy that can get you 28 to 32 fantasy points in that spot. So I, I definitely don't mind, uh, you know, going to Curtis Jones. As far as the forward rotation, like it's all these guys are like $500 overpriced. It feels like, I mean, Trey King's, 5,600 um, doesn't feel great. Robert Jones kind of limited with his minutes at 4,800. Like that doesn't feel great either. Hassan Ward's a per minute guy, but I mean, now he's all the way up to almost 5k. Like I would be okay. Maybe taking some shots on him just because he has upside. That's, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm really just looking to get into the guards from this side. Uh, Lipsy, uh, you know, he's $500 more. So I, I feel like that makes Gilbert more popular. Uh, but we know Lipsy, you know, can 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 flamethrow as well. So yeah, I think just kind of mixing and matching Gilbert with with uh, and, and Lipsy as well as Curtis Jones, just here and there, just in my lineups, putting one of those guys in, using that as kind of a one off. Really, that's all I'm really looking for in this game. And I, I kind of hate that this is the uh, the hammer, right, Jay? Like this is a game where it's not going to garner as much ownership as the uh, North Carolina Alabama game or as the first game, uh, Arizona and Clemson. So if we get some unders or if we get some guys that maybe get into foul trouble, don't hit ceilings, or maybe you're just average, I mean, you got a lot of studs in this game for sure. So I, I don't know. Like it still feels like more of a stay away. Like the, the UConn game as well, like that's it feels more like we should need to stay away from those a little bit more. But for tournaments, that means that, <laughs> you know, their top guys maybe go a little more overlooked. So. I don't know. I still think you got to have one of those guards in there. They, it feels too good when playing Illinois. We saw what Moorhead State <laughs> guards basically all got there in the mid six k range. Um, so yeah, man. Uh, I don't know. It, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a fun end to the night um, on this slate. And uh, yeah, in general, I'm looking forward to uh, to watching someone random, someone absolutely random, blasting this slate wide open at three percent. Uh, and thus, three percent of people can enjoy all the winnings. <laughs> it's one of us. It will be one of us. You know, it's going to be one of us. One of the breadheads hanging out tonight. You know, that the Gilbert and then Curtis Jones stack to get into this total at twelve seven for those two players. If you can make that work, I don't mind getting a little crazy there, like Mike was saying with the guards and really uh, relying on them a little bit. If you are going to get into this game, um, yeah, Gilbert just feels like a. That just feels like he's got a forty-two coming out of feels you good. know another another <laughs> one. Like it just feels like another it's one. coming. Another one, another one. Just like we got another subscription early, another sub earlier in the show from our new friend Joel, which we appreciate. Make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons as well. We made it through the four game showcase broskies and broskets. 
Mike, you and Mr. You're gonna you always give us the cash game core four. So let's get to the core four and more, starting with your cash. And again, we 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 always talk about a core. Like you talk about, but again, like when when I always talk about using them as pillars, like this is like legit. You have to figure out a way just to rotate these guys. This isn't like your typical slate where you could oh here's here's some core plays that we know and here's some value and so this isn't it doesn't work that way in this one with these four <laughs> games late in the Sweet Sixteen it just doesn't. So here are a few plays that Mike's going to give us. Uh, from yeah. a cash game perspective, that that we really should just rotate uh, in and out and be pillars of our cash. Alliance. Yeah. So I mean, it starts with Baycott, just the matchup that he's in against Alabama. Uh, should be able to you know work them inside. Feel like he's a lock for thirty-five to forty fantasy points at eighty-two hundred. Um, so yeah, you want to go ahead and obviously slot him in in all your cash lineups. Omar Balo at seventy-nine hundred. Um, you know, he's going to be on the court a ton. Uh, just feel like with Clemson, right? Like he, he's going to be able to kind of do his thing. I mean, he hasn't been, he hasn't had a bad game in, in, in outside of the last game in quite some time. I'm willing to toss that one out, uh, to use Omar Ballo here as a pillar. Uh, Tom and Lipsy, we just talked about him. Like the rates are just great to pace those spot against Illinois and the chase hunter. Um, kind of throwing away what he did earlier in the year, just looking at what he's been doing, um, showing some tournament upside, but, Really, man, like he's just uh, – he's doing his thing and it just feels like he's going to be able to uh, to create against this Arizona defense. So that leads you to 5K flat. Uh, you know, use one you – know, use two or three of these guys. Um, mix in a value play here or there. Uh, these guys, I feel, have higher floors uh, coming into this particular slate. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't play off – I wouldn't play all four together, to be completely honest with you, in a, in a cash lineup because then you're looking for cash guys that are – 40 like there's just not it's just not so use a couple of these guys uh try to build through the mid-tier maybe use someone like a micah parish maybe at 5k um just somebody that's going to play 30 minutes <laughs> uh, yeah. you know at that price point so uh jay you want to hit us with the uh with the tourneys here yeah i do uh, obviously when we talk about the cash core pillars those are the guys with the floors that are a little bit higher not as volatile of a players, but these tournament guys, these are the ones that can really bring home the dough and help you get this bread and see those commas. So we're going to go Mark Sears at 9K flat. Yes, I know it's going to be tough to get around, you know, paying 9K. So you got to have a star, though. You got to have at least one star in this one. And we're going to give you a couple of options here. Sears is volatile. R.J. Davis is another guy. Obviously, we want to see that R.J. Davis and Caleb Love smoke. Like our guy Forklift Jeremy was talking about in the comments earlier. We want to see it, and I hope we can see it. And I think R.J. Davis will have a big day. And just like Sears, you know, the big total, big ceilings there. So, got to like those two. P.J. Hall. 7,300, way too cheap for talent. Can't can't not play him. Can't not play him. He's just way too cheap. The volatility is there, but this is a tournament play. We know what we're getting. We know what we're getting out of all these players, the highs and the lows. But Hall has to be in consideration in your tournament core pillars. And then Keshawn Gilbert at 7K flat, pay some spot against Illinois. Somebody else to consider in that higher end of the old <sighs> mid tier 4.6 K left. You cannot play them all together. Do not play them all together. Do not try to find four guys that are 4.6 K on the average. You, you will not win. It will not happen, but rotate them in, in and out of there. Yeah. I'm spending like Mike. It's like, I, you know, he just, setting the tone for us you know i can spend i if he can spend anything he can do i can do better i can do anything better than you indeed and especially when it comes to spending that dough sears davis hall and gilbert there the tournament pillars excellent stuff everybody if you're hanging out with us live we really appreciate that jeff mama rocks Corey, who is of course the king of the single entry there. Jeff, 
hopping in. Forklift Jeremy, as always. AJ hopping in there. Jason B making a return to the live chat on a good night for him over on DK. Our new subscriber, Joel, we appreciate you, my guy, for hopping in there. We're glad we've got helped you get a little bit of that cash, and we hope to help you continue to do the same. So we do here. We get that bread, Joel. You know the deal. David spending some time with us early in the show. I got Nape, C, Hustle, and Ant the Kid as well. Make sure you give everybody follows on the screen here at Fantasy Nav in those Twitter streets at MC Holland 34. I am the conductor. I'm at Dr. William Cannon on Twitter. At the real Nape here is Nape C Hustle at Get Green Screens on TikTok at one end done. CBB is the show page on Twitter. Make sure you follow everybody and everything. Anything, if anything pops off, we're coming to you on Twitter. Send us a message, tag us, do your thing, shout us out. We want to hear from you. We want to get back to you. So make sure that you do that because we want to make sure that you get this bread. Chew. Thanks for stopping by the office. Get your fantasy prescription by subscribing to the channel and checking out drrodo.com. And until the next visit, be well and take care.